Where? Oh. Let's go! So we are headed to the LASIK doctor to have my hopeful final consultation or post-op or whatever you want to call it. But this traffic, this traffic, this traffic, this traffic is really bad, so we might be late. That appointment took about four minutes tops. <laughs> and uh, now it's starting to rain. So the doctor did say that my vision was great, 2020. So I, I know I never really give you guys an update after the LASIK, but uh, highly recommended. I like it. Seeing is so cool. I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> Over the past like 15 years, I've been missing out. Mr. Lucky Max, once again, this epic corner spot. So cool. Parking spots can be cool. If any of you guys are ever in the market for a new car, specifically an SUV, and you're looking to snag one, I cannot talk more highly about the Grand Cherokee. I love this car. I'm an SUV person. I just can't do a car. I don't know what it is. I like to be higher up. I just, I'm an SUV guy. I've been around Jeeps all my life. That's why I have a Jeep, but I love this thing. Absolutely love it. So headed into the gym right now. You won't actually see this footage. The only reason I'm bringing this big ass DSLR is so I can take some photos for my sponsor, for my cool red pants. But uh, again, I don't film every single workout, but I pretty much take a camera everywhere I go because you never know when you need to film something or take photos or whatever. Or whack someone in the head with a camera. Someone's trying to take my camera. If I whack someone in the head with this Sigma lens, definitely knock them right out. With this whole lifting schedule and having to go to the gym at night, um, I already didn't really like to cook that much, so now I cook even less than I did before, which was pretty much none unless my brother made something. Um, so like this is just a bag of pre-cooked potatoes, like the vegetables in the bag, and then we have two scoops of protein, which I need to actually, I haven't even shook this up yet. I try to get most of my calories in during the day at lunch, and I get Chipotle like 90% of the time, so I get like extra rice, extra meat, the tortilla on the side, sometimes like, you know, extra beans, extra fajitas, like I get a whole bunch of food, eat like bagels in the morning, a bunch of fruit throughout the day, um, protein cookie snacks, Quest chips, other things like that. I pretty much eat a lot of food during the day, so at nighttime, because I'm so busy at what I need to do after the gym or before the gym, I don't use that time to eat. I'd rather be doing productive things, um, so I try to get most of my calories during the day. So It's like 10.30 at night, I'm gonna eat this up, package up some orders, edit some videos, and whatever, you know. Oddly enough, a question I get asked a whole lot is how do I get my hair cut? I don't even know. There, there's no title. It's just long on the top, kind of short on the sides. But I'm gonna go get the haircut now so you can see the difference. It's not gonna look much different. <laughs> So we're all done. As you can see, sides are a lot shorter, a little bit off the top, but it's kind of a little poofy right now. He doesn't really poofy. Haircuts cost a lot in DC as well. I used to go to like Great Clips and pay like $15. Well, I used to actually cut my hair on my porch with my, my razor, my, bu my buzzer thing. Me and all my roommates did, and that was free. And then when your hair starts growing out, you have to get haircuts. And I used to get great clips and that was like $18. Now it's like double that <laughs> here in DC. But when you find someone that cuts your hair good and you go there and they know your hair, you go back. So it's DC for you. So I'm headed to the gym about an hour. I'm gonna have a little bit of a snack. I know in a previous video, I gave my thoughts on, on the Quest pumpkin flavored protein bar. And some of you thought that I was, you know, fake or skewed or over dramatic because I work with the company. It's gonna blow your minds, but you actually can work with a company and really enjoy some of their products. 
in the Quest Pumpkin Bar <laughs> is one of them that I think is very delicious. So that's why I have three boxes of them. I really like it. What's Nella doing over here? Nella. Nella. Living as a dog is the easiest life ever. To sleep, get some loving, eat food, poop, the life. Headed to the gym, got the brand new Blue Raz MTSP workout. They have a couple new flavors, the Fruit Punch and the Tropical Fruit. I've not tried any of them, so we're gonna try the Blue Raz out tonight. So, let's go. So I don't know who was it a while back that told me to listen to g Easy, which they say I look like him or he looks like me or whatever, it's because it's slick back hair. But I really, really like g Easy's music. g Easy, Not young g Easy. he is a young g Easy, but he's g Easy, And I'm actually really excited for his album in December. I give him three thumbs ups. That, God, I can't speak ever. They must not be able to film in the gym either. You gotta fitness where you can these days, guys. Okay, so that was doing safety bar squats. I only filmed like three of the sets. So it was 350 pounds, which is the last part of this wave. So this is the last time you're gonna see me do safety bar squats for a while. And it's kind of good because, because I have shoulder guy here, although I really like having him, and he hangs out with me all the time, that bar, even with the padding, it really pushes down and on my clavicle, and it's not the most comfortable thing, and I don't know if it's actually healthy for him. <laughs> Uh, if it's healthy for my bone to be pushing down when it's already protruded up, so it just kind of feels weird So I'm kind of glad to be done with that. Hopefully it had some carryover But uh, now we're moving to some deadlifts and I get a lot of questions about maybe You know different techniques and you know doing tutorial videos and I can give you guys a million tips in all my videos But I'm const I constantly get the same questions over and over again because I get new subscribers people don't watch every single video So I suggest you watch every single video but um, I'm gonna try to give you guys a little bit of tips on deadlift, sumo specifically, on how maybe I set up uh, my feet, my foot placement, my hand placement, uh, how far away the bar is, maybe some hip techniques. Um, again, every single video, I try to give maybe some sort of tip, so that's why you should watch them in order of them. We'll see what we can do. All right, now in terms of warming up for deadlifts, it's gonna be a little different for today. Um, normally I always start with 135. Some people start with straight up the bar. That's just not what I, I do. I've always started with 135. It's just when I first come to the gym, first thing I do is 135. Now because I've already done squats, if you ever do deadlifts after squats, you're not officially warmed up for deadlifts, but you're gonna be warm, you can warm up a whole lot quicker. Um, so I will progress in my weight, maybe a little higher jumps, or a little quicker. I won't do as many reps maybe um, than if it was if I just came in straight to a deadlift session. So I'd really recommend you just do the warm up that is best for you. Everyone has their own thing. Some people do like, I think Nick Wright just started doing like three reps at 135 as like an initial, and then he moves up to like one or 225. I usually always do, if I'm starting with deadlifts, would be to do two sets of anywhere from eight to 10 reps with 135. But because I've done squats, I'll probably just do, I don't even know, I don't count. Like there's no number, it's just how I feel.
Now I'm going to show you my setup. So this is how I stand, okay? This is a POV of my deadlift. What I try to do is I pretty much use this first line, if, the, if it's on the bar, to kind of like be in the middle of my foot. So that like cuts my foot off at an angle. So again, some people will do a lot wider of a stance. Maybe they'll point their toes out like this. Again, I go up, right about there. So not crazy wide out. And I keep a distance away from my shin. Some people may have it further in, but I just do it so when I go to bend down, then it's pretty much right at it and then it'll stay in the line of my shin. Now in terms of hand placement, you might assume because the knurling is right here that I put my hand completely on the knurling, but that is just not the case. My hands pretty much go straight down so I don't make my hands widen out. So again, it goes like pretty much straight down. And where that aligns for me on the bar is actually because I always do right hand over, left hand under. I never switch. Sometimes you should for imbalances or whatever reason. I just have never switched. I've always done right hand over, left hand under. It's worked for me, it meant it worked for everyone. But I pretty much have my index finger on the right side and my pinky finger on the left side on the smooth part of the bar. And you might think, well, you're not gonna get any grip there because it's on the smooth part. It works for me, and again, luckily, uh, I don't have any issue with my grip yet. <laughs> maybe I'm not holding enough weight, you know what I'm saying? So, again, some people maybe go a little bit wider. It's really gonna depend. And then on my conventional stand, my conventional grip is very much the same. So my conventional grip is here, same thing. So pretty much my conventional and my sumo grip are pretty much identical. Another big question that I get is when to use chalk, when to use your belt, should I use straps, can I use straps? It's all going to be, every single deadlifting case is going to be different, guys. You're all individuals and you all have individual responses to certain ways that you train. So I used to use straps a long time ago. I've not used straps in a very long time. My grip strength has developed to the point where I don't need them unless my hand rips. Uh, so I, I choose not to use straps. If you guys want to, that is totally up to you. Just know that it will affect your grip strength. Um, in terms of chalk, I personally use chalk at 405. I could do 405 without chalk. Again, I just choose to do it. So do it when you feel you're necessary and when it's necessary. And again, as you deadlift, you get experience, you get more time on the bar, you're gonna adapt how you train, adapt how you deadlift. Maybe you might change when you use chalk. In terms of the belt, I always use a belt at 405. That's just what I've always done. It's what I'll continue to do. I could do four or five. I've done 500 for like, I think like two reps one time on video with no belt. I just choose to use a belt because I like wearing a belt and I, I personally go to four or five. That's just me. So again, those three things are gonna be dependent upon you and how you train and how you decide you want to deadlift. Another question I get is why do I do this thing? You know, why do I do this? Two main reasons. One is to get a whole bunch of up into my diaphragm and my chest and all up in my body. Big breath of air, expand the rib cage, and then we'll go down and I'll exhale till about halfway up or sometimes I forget to do it and I almost pass out. Um, but it's also a mental cue for me. Like this is the motion that I've kind of I've been accustomed to now that starts my deadlift. Back when I used to do conventional, uh, I used to do this thing. I'd like sit down at the bar for a minute. I'd do a lot of like air humps, and I'd have my hands in the bar the entire time. And then when I switched to sumo, I, I did that a little bit as well. I would keep my hands in the bar the entire time. Now, I feel if I keep my hands in the bar, I almost lose tightness when I go to up. When I do this thing, I go down, I always like this, and then I, and then I lock into position and then I go. So. Again, not everyone does it. It may look weird, but generally everyone has their own like deadlift mental cue or deadlift setup. So that's just what mine is. You gotta remember, I'm all, I'm pretty much built to deadlift. I have super long legs and I have long orangutan arms. My hip, like, my hip is here, guys. I'm all legs. I am built Beep boop, beep boop. Pretty much a deadlift. <laughs> Some people are built to do every lift and that's like they're perfect. But uh, you know, work with what you can. And now again, there's a lot of deadlift tips that I did not cover in this specific video, but it, it, it'd be 
the longest video in the world if I covered every single aspect of the deadlift in terms of what I think. So uh, I'll come back to some stuff, leave some comments down below as to maybe what other tips or stuff you'd like to see, and uh, we'll incorporate it. I'm sorry, so I can barely hear you. What was that again? Can I get a spicy chicken sandwich with no mayonnaise and a barbecue sauce on the side? Okay. And that'll be it. 538, thank you. Thank you. Do you guys ever go through drive throughs and then you might regret doing it, but you can't get out because you're locked in back and forth? You're like, well, now I'm dedicated to this. 10.30 at night, finishing out with a spicy chicken sandwich from Wendy's. No mayonnaise, barbecue sauce on the side because delicious. I'm pretty sure Wendy's is up there with the top. Burger King's like way down here except for chicken fries. Wendy's is pretty high. <laughs> Late night chicken sandwich.